As commercial aviation grew in the 1920s and 1930s, many of America's major cities, like New York, St. Louis, Los Angeles, and San Francisco, broke ground on brand new airports. Dallas and Fort Worth were not far behind. Dallas converted a World War I Army airfield, called Love Field, into a new passenger airport. Fort Worth, which had been at the forefront of American aviation from the earliest days of powered flight, built a brand new airport called Meacham Field. While both the Dallas and Fort Worth airports were big enough to serve the needs of their respective cities, city leaders saw an opportunity to build a single, large airport to serve the travel needs of both cities and to the entire North Texas region. With the onset of the Depression in the 1930s, a major public works project, like a large regional airport, made economic sense. An airport building project could bring much needed jobs and pump much needed money into local economies. The cities of Fort Worth and Dallas, often bitter rivals, put aside their differences and agreed to jointly build a new international airport halfway between their city centers. The new airport would be built on the county line that separated Dallas and Tarrant counties on the far eastern edge of Fort Worth. The cities agreed that they would both contribute money to fund the airport and would both jointly apply for a federal government WPA grant to provide additional money to build it. The cities also agreed that they would share revenues produced by the airport. The idea of an international airport shared between the two cities seemed to be a good one at the time, not only because of the potential revenues the airport would generate, but also because the airport would enable the cities to compete with other large metropolitan areas. Dallas and Fort Worth had a plan that would give them a clear advantage over other cities, as long as they cooperated. The new airport would be called Midway Airport. Ground was broken for the airport in the mid-1930s. The work of clearing empty fields to build runways, hangars, and the terminal building moved along nicely as the airport took shape. Cooperation between Dallas and Fort Worth, however, was short-lived. During construction, Dallas leaders discovered the new airport was actually one mile closer to Fort Worth than Dallas. They also noticed the airport terminal would face Fort Worth. Angry about this, Dallas pulled its support from the project and expanded Love Field instead. This left the city of Fort Worth with a partially completed airport on their hands. After World War II ended, it became clear to Fort Worth that Meacham Field was unsustainable. It was hemmed in on three sides, and the opportunity for growth was limited. Under the leadership of Eamon Carter, a Fort Worth businessman, Fort Worth approached Dallas once again about building a regional airport. Dallas said no, undeterred. Fort Worth moved ahead in the early 1950s with the plans to build Greater Southwest International Airport. It was to be built on the same land as the old Midway Airport. The new airport would be built in a great location in the middle of growing suburbs and along two major highways. Its plans featured multiple runways, a modern terminal, air conditioning, underground utilities, underground fuel storage, and ample parking. Its terminal design was Art Deco, with a southwestern twist. On April 25, 1953, after spending millions of dollars, Fort Worth's new state-of-the-art airport opened. Large murals lined the walls and ceilings. Also, gold reliefs lined the walls of the terminal, and it had restaurants, lounges, and all sorts of modern conveniences. Thousands came to the airport's opening. They were impressed with the airport's size and beauty. Its four-story terminal was an imposing sight on the Texas prairie. The GSW terminal proudly faced downtown Fort Worth, beckoning its people to come. GSW had two concourses with 17 gates. It was congestion-free, safe, and easy to access. GSW's airfield was named Eamon Carter Field to honor the legacy of Mr. Carter whose leadership helped make the airport a reality. By 1957, American, Braniff, Central, Continental, Delta, Eastern Frontier, and Trans-Texas Airways all flew from GSW. The new airport boasted 97 scheduled departures a day. Oddly, half of GSW's 97 flights were to Dallas Love Field, just 12 miles away, because the airlines could not attract enough local passengers to take direct flights from GSW. Airlines had to fly to Love Field from GSW to pick up more passengers. By the late 1950s, passenger loads began to decline from the already low numbers from GSW. Not even the addition of jet service in 1959 helped. Love Field in Dallas, by contrast, was booming. Fort Worth worried that their new and modern airport would fail. 
GSW continued to falter through the mid-1960s. Airlines left the struggling airport. In 1964, the Civil Aeronautics Board, the federal agency that regulated air travel, had grown weary of supporting two large airports in the region. The CAB told Dallas and Fort Worth that the agency would no longer authorize the two airports and directed the cities to come to an agreement to jointly build a regional airport. They gave Dallas and Fort Worth 180 days to develop an acceptable plan. With their backs to the wall, Dallas agreed to work on a plan with Fort Worth. In 1965, the cities announced their agreement to jointly build a new airport. Instead of expanding GSW or Love Field to serve both cities, they decided to build a completely new airport just to the north of GSW. Construction on the new regional airport began in 1969 for a 1973 opening. It would be larger than Love Field and GSW combined. It would be called DFW Airport. This new agreement was a death sentence for the 12-year-old GSW. By 1967, GSW's gates and huge terminal stood almost empty and unused. From 1967 to 1968, all except one airline left GSW. In 1969, even that lone airline, American Airlines, left. GSW had gone from a grand opening in 1953, full of hope and promise, to a quiet and unceremonious collapse in 1969. Meanwhile, Love Field, which Dallas had agreed to restrict, continued to grow and become more and more congested. GSW was converted into a training and maintenance facility in the 1970s. Meanwhile, workers continued to maintain its lonely terminal and concourses as if passengers would return Sunday. When DFW Airport opened in 1973, people quickly forgot about GSW. As the 1970s wore on, the city of Fort Worth leaders eventually made the difficult decision to tear down the once beautiful terminal and to plow under GSW's runways. For the next 30 years, the GSW site was an empty field. A few passengers who flew over the site as they took off from DFW Airport noticed the Ghost Airport, but the most observant and informed passengers said that they could still see GSW's outline below. In the 2010s, the valuable land that had once been home to GSW gave birth to commercial buildings to support the growing DFW Metroplex. Today, all that remains of the Ghost Airport are some venerable live oak trees that once lined its entrance and parking lot. These will also be gone soon. Offices, apartments, and warehouses are being built on the remaining land. The one reminder of the airport is Ammon Carter Boulevard, off Highway 183 between Dallas and Fort Worth which is the old GSW runway. Perhaps nobody wants to remember the inability of two great cities to cooperate and create something better for the whole region. Or perhaps nobody wants to remember how quickly a man-made icon can return to dust. There is, nevertheless, a happy ending for the story of the Ghost Airport. GSW paved the way for DFW. The vision of GSW was right. The DFW region needed one large airport, between Dallas and Fort Worth. DFW Airport now handles over 60 million passengers a year. Its airlines fly to hundreds of domestic and international cities. And DFW contributes over $32 billion a year to the local economy. GSW's real legacy is the important lesson it left behind. Adjacent cities can achieve great things when they work together for the good of all their citizens.